I slept. <laughs> so, um, I know that when people were doing this for you yesterday, the very first problem that came about, and we were fine, we got the linear, we did the exponential. Now some people thought, okay, you know, that looks pretty good. Personally, I thought, this could maybe be some spreading out here. So, I, being cautious, like to go and check all of them to make sure there's not a better choice. So, I then went and did the power model. Well, when we went and did the power model, we had a lot of questions because this looked very weird. We ended up having the y-axis right here. If we have the y-axis right here, then what kind of x values do we have over here to the left? We've got negatives. So let me talk to you about why that happened. The reason that there were x values that were negative is this. Here, in the original data, you have five values that are less than one. If you have a value that is less than one, then that means 10 to some exponent has to be a number that is less than one. Well, guess what? 10 to the zero, you know, is number one. The only way to make the result of this be less than one is to have a negative exponent. A negative exponent, for example, 10 to the negative 1, a negative exponent reciprocates the base. That's what makes it 1 tenth to the 1 power. So the only way you can get a decimal that is less than 1 is to have a negative exponent. So all of these would have a negative exponent. That is what makes those exponent values negative. Okay. That's why that happened. Let's then put that there. Okay, so that's what's going on. Now, when I did this, I was thinking, okay, I think there's more of a pattern happening here. The scatter is worse. I mean, the scatter is not as good. I think it's probably the best way to say that. It's not as uh, random, not as random scatter, and the R value is not as strong. So because of that reason, I chose exponential as my best model. So I chose exponential, so I went and took the exponential equation, I unlogged it to get this, and then I did my prediction. Um, okay, we're fine with this prediction, we're good here. But you know what, we have questions, people are asking me, how do you get this residual? What two things do you need for residual? Actual, Actual good, and predicted. Predicted we're fine with, we got that up here. Okay. Where does this actual come from? From the table, the chart, right here. Okay? It has to come from there. You have to be given the actual. It's one of the pieces of data. Okay? So that's where the actuals are located. So that's how you accomplish getting the residual. So the actual was 41 millimeters below predicted. Okay, good. On this next one, um, we did linear. I get it if you stopped at linear, I mean, because that scatter looks pretty good. I personally keep going to check because I just need to be sure that there's not a better model, especially being a teacher. I need to make sure I've considered all the options here. Um, this one also looked random to me. I mean, I could see that it's random. has a higher R value. I could also have some people make a case for that we are starting to get a pattern here. Okay? So the reality is, that, you know, because I thought this one definitely was a pattern and a worse R value. So, I did not really know for sure which one you would say is the best model. I think you could argue either the linear model or the exponential model. So, I did the computations for both. <coughs> Here on the left is what you would get if you did the exponential model. And I did here in this section what you would get if you did a linear. Now granted, they're not crazy far apart from each other. Okay, so they're in the kind of the same realm. All right, so again, here's the, here's the chain of logic you're going through. You're looking and seeing which one has the most random scattered. That's your primary. Residual plot is the primary um, reason that you pick a model. 
they all look kind of random, then you're going to go default to the R value. Okay. All right. Make sure you know your phrases. You know your coefficient of determination phrase. You know your R phrase. What's the phrase for our R values? There's a moderate, strong, weak, whatever. Positive or negative. Linear relationship. Okay. There's a weak, weak, strong, or some kind of strength. <coughs> Positive or negative. Linear relationship between the two variables. That's what this does for you. This one is about the variation in the Y values that is happening because of the linear relationship between the X and the Y. And then the third phrase is the yikes. There's a pattern in the residual plot, therefore a whatever model is not appropriate. Okay, here's this one with the temperature and the ice cream. I thought that this linear model looked great. It had a nice, beautiful, even scatter. Uh, you know, the exponential wasn't bad. It just kind of bothered me that this looked a little closer. I mean, personally, I thought I liked the linear scatter better. Uh, and this is like crazy picky. I mean, so I would totally support you going with the linear. That's fine. Um, you will notice that this is like 2,000 or 10,000, whatever, uh, less strong. Um, and strangely enough, on the power model, it also had scatter, and it actually had the strongest R value. So, uh, absolutely, I would go linear, probably, if I was you, because that was gorgeous. If you go linear, here is the answers you would have gotten. Um, if you went power, here are the ones on the right. Please notice, look at here. Look at the difference in these numbers between the two models. They're not really that far off, okay? So both models actually did a fair, uh, fairly good job at predicting. Um, oh, one thing though that I'm wondering, and I actually don't know the answer to this, but I was wondering about this. So if you go into business and you know you have a situation like this where the models are all looking the same, I was wondering, and this is kind of one of the reasons I want to go get, say, like a master's in statistics, because I think maybe this kind of question I would get answered. Look at the window of these residuals. Look here. If the residuals for a power model have a negative 0.04 up to a positive 0.06, so these distances are very what? Very small. Look at the window for the linear residuals. Negative 23 up to positive 22. That's a lot larger. So honestly, I've not been taught anything uh, in our curriculum to say that that's an issue. So I don't know if proportionately or, or something is going on there, um, but I wonder about that. I wonder if if you went into this and did a business model with it or something, then there would be something to the importance of this smaller residual scale. Okay. All right. Next, here we go, multiple choices. <clears throat> Any of these types of transformations that are straight up, add, subtract, multiply, divide, even switching the X and Y, do not change your correlation, the linear correlation. Any of these linear <coughs> transformations don't matter. Okay? So any of these linear transformations are not affecting it. Uh, one that you want to watch out for, if you multiplied one of the variables by a negative you know, then it might change your sign. Okay, that's the only thing that would be changing there. Now, of course, exponential, those transformations kind of did change the R value, but you will not be approached with that. Yeah. Okay, number six. First time I did this, I know that I fell for the trick and I missed the little detail. I thought statement one was a true statement, but it really is not true. It's false. Okay, so that's tricky. Here's why it's false. The R value is a measure of linearity. And so when it says there's no relationship, it's actually saying that there is no linear relationship. Okay? So that's what makes this a false statement. You can have an R value of zero and have this right here going on. That's a gorgeous quadratic relationship. Okay? but it's not a linear relationship, so it could have had a zero, R value of zero. See, that's the issue. Um, I was fine with two being false. I mean, that's like crazy bad, nothing close to what we've even talked about. 
But do be careful on three. I even double checked this one because I wanted to make sure. Cause and effect is something that we can never ever say, even if it appears to be a perfect R equals one correlation. Okay? Yes. That's a very good question. Um, and I've been uh, wondering about that myself because that's something that's kind of been new this year that we've been really good at uh, focusing on the details of. And I think R squared can go to more than just linear relationships. So you could use R squared to represent your exponential and all that kind of stuff. Okay? Um, so I think that if this was for an exponential transformation, then you would say, if you have it in linear form, your answer you're saying in linear form, you're going to say linear relationship. If you have your thing unlogged and written in an exponential format, I think it just depends on what you have your format as. Okay? Okay. So we are down here. And again, just don't ever say cause and effect, so all those statements are false. All right. Seven, do you see the cluster of those points? They are all identical. There was no flattening and crushing and exponential or log or power transformation. These were all only affected by, say, a multiple factor that changed scale. Okay? So that just a plain multiple factor is not going to change the R value. So that's why the R value of all those are the same. Um, here, 5 was just a straight up. Do you know the computation for slope? There's your thing for slope. Put in the point that is on the line. Back into it. By the way, when you computed the slope, there was only one of them that it could have been. I went ahead and did all of it to make sure that that was the correct y-intercept and I didn't make a mistake somewhere. There you go. Okay. Number 9... Um, I put this line in here. I, it might have actually been a teensy bit lower if you kind of tried to average out the residuals because the residuals, the ones above and the ones below, should average out to zero. Okay? If you add them up, or sum to zero. Add them and subtract that. Adding them all together, the ones above and the ones below, should sum to zero. Okay. Now, um, and so I kind of think this is what your residual plot would pretty much actually look like because the line is across there horizontally, so I three is good. Well, let's talk through these other ones. X has the largest residual in absolute value of any of these points. And that's certainly not true because some of these ones above and below have a larger residual, so no. Two says it's an influential point. Okay, let's go back. Come on, people. Let's dissect the definition of influential point. We missed those quite a bit on the quiz that I handed back yesterday. The definition of influential point means this. Removing the influential point has a large effect on that least squares regression line. I don't think taking that point out is going to probably change that line very much, if anything at all. Okay? So it's pretty much going to stay about there where it is. Um, so, 2 is out. Therefore, 3 only is the only one true on that. Now, look here. Number 10 is about this definition of influential point, okay? Statement 2 here is straight up definition of influential point. Removing of this point sharply affects the regression line. That's straight out definition. Um, and number 3 is also a good way to see if it affected the line. Compute the line with the point in. And with the point out, and then you can see if there's a big change in the equation of the line. But let's talk about this number one. It says looking at the residual plot is an excellent way of picking out an influential point. And so I want to give you an example of when that's not the case to demonstrate why one is not a true statement. Let's think back to the problem that we had about shoe size and IQ. Is there a relationship between your shoe size and your IQ? What do you think? think so. No. This is pretty much going to be a flat, straight across line because there's no linear correlation between shoe size and IQ. But if I've got Bozo with a gargantuan shoe size and he's a genius up here, then he in turn makes this no correlation uh, look like it has some kind of correlation. If he's so strong of an outlier, an influential point with high leverage, 
that he makes uh, this line pull towards him. It almost maybe even goes through his value. Okay? So if it's going through his value or it's really close to it, would it have a large residual? No. So it's influential, totally changing this line, and he wouldn't look like a large residual on the residual plot. But that's why one is not a true statement. Okay. All right. Here to 11. Uh, pretty much all that I would expect a G2 to have come up with on this first part is that there's some kind of nonlinear relationship happening here. Okay. You'd be noticing something's going on. I'm going to have to transform it to figure out the uh, branch relationship. Okay. There's some things to learn here. All right. So, first of all, you should notice that they use LN instead of LOG. Right? This LN instead of LOG is this thing called natural log. Natural log has a different base. It's similar, has a different base up. The base we use is base 10. Base 10s are commonly used in things that are numerical. Money, distances, like distances out into space that you want to condense those amounts because they're gargantuan. Uh, binary code, computer code, those kinds of just numerical concepts in that way are going to be best compressed with base 10. Okay? Natural logs are typically used because they are with the base E. This base E is actually a number, and there's a button on your calculator. If you press the E, it'll pull up this number 2.718. <coughs> Well, that is often used with natural occurrences in science, you know, um, rate of oxygen depletion, um, the amount of carbon decay, you know, because you can do the carbon dating and all that kind of stuff. So, a lot of times these natural events are best demonstrated with this um, because of the doubling process and therefore we've got that going on. So, you know, you don't freak out about that. You just notice that they reference the natural log instead of the base 10 log. So, when you say this R value, you are saying that 89% of the variation in the Y. What's the response? The natural log of rate is the response. So, I'm saying 89.4% of the variation in natural log of rate is being explained by the linear relationship between natural log of rate and natural log of age. So that was a little tricky. Hadn't exposed you to anything like that. All you have to watch for is the format of what the regression equation is, okay? Then you just plug in the appropriate variable. This was the y variable, this was the x. It was in those forms. So we have natural log of rate and the natural log of rate name, okay? Questions on that? Okay. And lastly, this one, yeah, I would say there's still a pattern. So on number or letter C, I said, yeah, I don't think power model is appropriate because uh, there's still a pattern going on. So maybe there's something better, but that is not it. And then lastly, number 12, it was an exponential uh, compression because we had a regular X and the log of the Y. Okay. Um, and so I just unlogged it and I got this. I had to write it in whole numbers because I ran out of room on my page. Um, but Monday, I only really talked about this once. And then this concept showed up on your quiz, this idea of this extrapolating and that's making predictions far outside the data. I can't think of the word. And it's okay. If you couldn't think of the word, I still... Uh, just kind of read your description of it and that was okay and I gave you credit for that but that word is extrapolating now honestly I don't think this is crazy extrapolation because it's just out here at 16 so that's not way too far the one on our quiz went was like so we had 1920 up to 2000 so and they, like 30 years difference. well that's still uh, well, I don't it's not know really. You know, that one up two, and that one went up three. So it went up 30. Yeah, but only three, like, lines spread out two lines. You had eight lines in there, and that was Okay. Sorry. Well, anyway, the point I was looking for, though, no, the point I was looking for is that it is outside of the data, okay? So that's 
that's dangerous. So, but it did say, even though it's extrapolating, what would it be? And so you'd want to make sure that you're looking at this and seeing if you think that it's re re uh, reasonable if it is extrapolating. Okay, done. Any other questions on that? Okay, that was the speed review. Now, we're going to do this little pass the pigs, and what you're going to do is, uh, no, will you come around and pick those class tops up, please? So, you're going to get, you picked up your little probability pigs tally, and I'm going to give you a pig, and you're going to get to roll your pig, and then collect your data on it.